by getting your name out and getting through and creating that buzz, you can really raise that visibility out there and network like never before. It's really exciting. In this video, my boy Chris from IAPath.com interviews Ernie Bray, the chairman and CEO of ACD, which is a fast growing auto claims company that is changing the insurance landscape and is quickly becoming famous for speeding up the claims process, winning award after award. Here, Ernie talks about how networking is critical to your success as an adjuster, starting now. This is Adjuster TV. Hey, it's Matt here with Adjuster TV. For the best tips and tools for getting on the first call list as an independent adjuster, subscribe now. Click on the bell notification so you'll never miss a video. And thanks to Josh who says, I just purchased the Elite Adjuster Method bundle, ebook and MP3 because I don't read for pleasure. However, I could not put the book down. Great read. I've been an adjuster for one year now and wish I would have had this when I first started. The time management techniques shared are worth the purchase alone. Thank you, Matt. And thanks for checking out the book, Josh. If you'd like to know more about how to survive your first cat as an independent cat property adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. Okay, this is a juicy one. Before we jump into the interview, if you don't have your adjuster license yet or you need some continuing education credits to maintain your adjuster licenses, head on over to adjustertv.com forward slash adjuster pro. All right, here's Chris interviewing Ernie. I'm here with Ernie Bray. Now, Ernie is the CEO of ACD, and everyone still, for some reason, knows him as Auto Claims Direct. But Auto Claims Direct, ACD, whatever you want to call him, uh, Ernie is really good at doing certain things really well. And one of the things I think he's best at, and we were talking about this before you hit the record button, Ernie, is networking. So I wanted to bring you on, along with other industry-leading experts, to help IAAs and other listeners know how to network well. And before we jump into the questions, you just did a networking piece where you guys won an award. So why don't you tell everybody about that? Well, yeah, just recently uh, we were named uh, one of the best entrepreneurial companies in America by uh, Entrepreneur Magazine. And that was a very exciting award for us because uh, they did an analysis of our whole company. And um, it was covers like innovation, leadership, uh, how you, you know, basically growing the company. Very exciting award for us. And, uh, that helps, that in itself helps, you know, a company get even recognition. And we'll talk about this in when we talk about networking today, uh, the importance of getting yourself out there, uh, linking with people, communicating. And when it comes to growing your business, you, your goal is to create a buzz about your company and whatever industry you're in. Because if people don't know about you, the biggest problem in any business is obscurity. If people don't know you exist, then you're going to have a hard time growing your company. We can talk a little bit about that. Yeah. So Ernie, we just in like the first 30 seconds, we've shattered all preconceived notions of what we're going to talk about when we say networking when we were all over the board. But when I say networking, what does networking make you think of? Well, I think a lot of people, when they think about networking, traditionally, before I even got in the business, you thought about going to events where you go to a networking event and you go to some, uh, maybe a business event in your town where you meet people that are maybe accountants and attorneys and people of other businesses and you're exchanging business cards and it's kind of an old school way of doing it. That's traditionally what networking was thought of. I mean, even in local areas, like in some parts of the country, in many parts of the country, there's adjuster organizations that you can become a member of locally, maybe in your own town or your city or in the you know, region you're in. And these groups are, we'll talk about how there's a possibility to network there. But when we started out, or just in networking, you think about just exchanging business cards and trying to build a network of business connections that way. And that's the old school method. That's what people think about when you think of networking. But with technology and all the things we have today, it's taken on even a bigger, um, bigger you know, thing we can talk about. I mean, look at this. You're on one side of the country. I'm on the exact opposite side end yeah. of the spectrum. And we're sitting here having a conversation that other people from all over the country are going to be able to view. We're networking right now. even Exactly. As exactly. And that's the thing. With today's technology, you can connect with everybody out there. You have the opportunity to build your business to bigger levels than ever before. Before the internet was out there, you were confined to a local area and you had to do things by mail and phone. But with LinkedIn and other opportunities out there, by getting your name out 
and getting through and creating that buzz, you can really raise that visibility out there and network like never before. It's really exciting. It, it really, really is. So now, Ernie, talking about the old way of doing things, we have all have heard it at least once, if not hundreds of times. The, getting in and working in the insurance industry is all about who you know, and that's how you get started. Is that statement still true today? I mean, I think in some ways, it, in an industry like the insurance industry, it's a large industry, but in some ways, it's really small because it is, in some ways, it is who you know. But to get to know people, it's not that difficult. You have to be able to not be scared about reaching out to people and taking that, that chance to go out there and present your business. I think a lot of people in general, when you're running a company, it, it's, it's nerve. It, it's a scary thing. I mean, if you don't know anybody in this industry, you're starting from zero. You have no history, you have no reputation, but you gotta build that reputation and that's how you do it. You have to go out there and take that leap. And I know it's scary, but I'm gonna give you a few tips later on and how you can do that. But um, don't, my advice out there is don't fall into the hype that it's, it, it's, everything's about who you know. It's about your reputation. That's what you've gotta build. And if you can build that, that will go a long way because once you start to build uh, initial clients that you do a great job for, the networking starts to take care of itself because you start to get referrals and starts to build on itself. So the key though is don't be scared and don't just follow in, you know, fall into the mindset that everything is, you're going to have a hard time doing it because if you have a personality that's energetic, enthusiastic, and you believe in yourself and you believe in your product, that will go a long way to being very attractive to people out there who want to network with you. Not, they want to network. People are attracted to energy and people are excited and passionate about the career they're in. If you can do that, you're going to be very successful. All right. <clears throat> so that's what to do, Ernie. But what do you see people doing wrong, particularly IAs? What are they, how are they networking incorrectly? Okay. Right now, I would say I see a lot of IAs don't market their business on LinkedIn. Now, when I say they don't have a good profile on LinkedIn, now some of them have a great, they do a great job at it. But I'm saying that the people out there, if they can build a solid profile on LinkedIn and not be afraid to reach out, uh, be positive in all interactions. Now, I know there's boards out there that talk about the industry and people like to talk on the boards and that's a great thing. But um, be positive, be bringing positive things to the industry creates um, a good feeling amongst people and people want to be attracted to that. So I'd say build that social media, write articles, maybe even write a short article about something that reflects what's going on in the industry in a positive way that shows your expertise, you know, because on LinkedIn, it's really easy. You can now talk about that. You can post articles, you can become a thought leader because a lot of people out there have a lot of knowledge. They have a lot of skills, but if you don't, display those skills, people are not going to know. So take advantage of the tools that are there, such as that LinkedIn, publishing on LinkedIn. You know, those are the kind of things. And also, I think one of the mistakes people make, they don't reach out and they're, they're not, um, I'd say not aggressive, but not forward thinking where they need to reach out to your potential customers um, and not be afraid because everyone's out there looking to work with great people. And just sometimes in any business, it's, it's hard to take that step. I know that, but that can really make the difference. Love it, love it, love it. So, Ernie, you did not start out as Ernie Bray, CEO of ACD, who wins all these awards and is thought of a leader as a leader in the industry. So how has networking played a role in you building your career inside of the uh, this industry? Well, my experience, I mean, you just talk about the industry in general or how I got into the networking and overall, because... Probably I, as in the industry in general, how it's helped from the concept, because we've kind of, if you haven't heard the podcast episode where we talk about the origin of ACD, Ernie wasn't in insurance for forever, but he did start in insurance, but that networking, I assume, had a role to play when you got started. Well... I think, and I'm going to give, I'm going to take you way back. I'm going to take you way back to a little bit of the origins of kind of how things went. So I graduated from college. I played basketball in college. I graduated, got into a job, and ended up in insurance. And I was not really passionate about insurance at all. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Uh, but I started working for an insurance company, and that was my day job. At this time, though, 
my brother and I, my brother was a huge country music fan, okay? And this is in the mid, this is at the start of the internet age. And he started one of the first country music online magazines, media companies in the Silicon Valley. And he started out and I helped him out. So I joined up, helped him out on my free time. And this is kind of where I learned a lot about the networking. This is a time that he started this company and I joined up with him. I was partnered with him in it. And we were covering country music artists at the time. This is Garth Brooks, Toby Keith, um, all these famous artists that were huge in the mid nineties, you know, George Strait. We started this company online, one of the first online things. And we had to cover, we wanted to cover concerts, do interviews, and I had no experience. So what did I do? Didn't have the internet at the time. We started reaching out to record labels, making cold calls, doing CD, CDs. I'm talking about CD reviews. They, they would send us CDs from the, from the, um, from the record label. And we would do a review, listen to it, and he would write it up, and we would interview the country music. Uh, Billy Ray Cyrus, guys like that were calling our house. Talk. It was crazy, but we were doing something we had no experience in. We were reaching out to labels, meeting country music artists, and interviewing people, and I, like I said, no experience. So the fear that I had is like, I just tried something new, so I just started doing it. We started doing it, and I would have to say the groundwork of taking that from zero and building it into, you know, for a three or four year, so the company was in business, Gaining that experience made it easier. So when I transitioned to building an insurance appraisal technology company, reaching out to people was second nature, not being afraid because you're going to have to go beyond your comfort zone. And really that in a way was sort of the groundbreaking for me uh, to take that, go past that fear level and learn how to network. And pretty soon we were actually talking to different labels and Hey, could you review this album? Hey, would you mind doing this? Here's a free, here's, 10 free CDs from all the people we have on our label right now. Can you go ahead and look? So then you start networking, getting connections back and forth. And before you know it, you're building a network. And that's how it works in every business. And that's how it started to work in insurance. So when we got into insurance, sure, I was on the insurance side working for a carrier, but I had no experience networking with, with other insurance companies. So when we had ACD, we applied some, you know, employed some of the same methods reaching out, making phone calls, sending emails, sending uh, postcards, building those initial connections, and then it starts to build on itself. And that's how it is for any business. It's that initial step. It's so important. Hope that gives you a little insight there. Gives a lot of insight. I hope everyone can catch it without me regurgitating because that was amazing. So it's obvious. <laughs> wow. Love that story. I didn't even realize all that. I know we talked briefly about it country music thing before but that is super cool so then as you you've touched on this um and kind of glazed around it but i think this is where you really wanted to take the conversation when we talked beforehand you know what tips would you give an ia or whether new or veteran about how to take their networking to the next level and develop clientele and deeper relationships with people not just getting started because i think we talk a lot about that, but I think you want to take it a little bit further. So I'm going to give you the floor and let you run with it. And I'll ask follow-up questions as needed. You got it. No problem. So if you're an appraiser out there, and like I said, this, type, this goes along with any kind of business out there, but if you want to grow your business, you want, I mean, that should be your goal. Number one, you want to be able to grow your business. So it's stable. You have consistent volume coming in and you are growing and you're moving upward. Now this industry has changed, it's very dynamic right now and I'll talk a little bit about that. But the key is, and I'm gonna go back and I'm just gonna break it down for you now. Have a great LinkedIn profile. When people are looking to build their vendors, their network of, you know, the vendor network, people are gonna search on LinkedIn. LinkedIn's a great place. Make sure that your profile's filled out. You have a professional photograph on there. Now I'm saying you don't have to, it doesn't have to be a professional done with you know, this you know, suit and tie on, but it's just us look professional, business, business life. And also when you talk about what you do, make sure you have some of the keywords. If you're trying to get business in this appraisal business, I would have independent auto damage appraiser, independent appraiser. Those keywords should be in your profile because people are going to be searching for those keywords. Also describe your experience. Make sure you cover your experience, your background and your history. So people know and detail what kind of services you offer because that'll make it that much easier. Now, 
Next up, we talked earlier about the fact that don't be hesitant to do some writing. You know, good to be engaged in the groups. When you're engaged in the groups, that's great. But I think a great opportunity is to do a short article. It doesn't have to be more than 250 words. It could be something that's educational or something that shows your expertise in the industry that you could post in your LinkedIn profile. And you, there's a published tool in LinkedIn. You can publish a quick article. If you do something like that, things that draw attention to yourself, that gives you more visibility. The more buzz you can create about yourself, all the better. Then the next thing, too, that you can do that can really get out there is when you start to get business and you start to get clients, build that reputation as being reliable and being consistent in what you do and a great communicator. Because once you build a great reputation, your reputation is the most important thing you have out there. And if you can maintain a great reputation, you will be a go-to person, the go-to person that all these independent appraisal companies and all these different, you know, potential customers of yours will want to use. So it all revolves around that reputation. Be seen as a positive, energetic influence because when you're done, and I'm speaking from our point of view at ACB, when claims come in, and there's assignments out there, and there's a problem claim that comes in, we look in the network for who's gonna be able to take care of that claim, get it done, and we can count on without following up with it. And then we just know that person's gonna do a great job and make that carrier happy. And if you become that go-to person, that name, that reputation spreads amongst all the employees within our company and known as a go-to person. But that happens when you work for other companies as well. So when you're working for some of our competitors, you're seen as a go-to person. And the key is that's how you do it. You build the reputation, you get out there on LinkedIn. And next up I wanna talk about is don't be afraid to reach out and market your business in a positive way. We at ACD, we're looking for quality companies at all times. We want people to reach out to us and we're actually actively seeking top appraisers. But at the same time, if you're reaching out, talking about what you can do, what your services are, that's a great way to move forward. And it seems so simple, but there's a lot of people that don't take the opportunity. Now, I Wait, do- Let's always... back up a second here, Ernie, because I want to jump in. I want to I dive in here. Uh -huh. I think you've got a lot more right there. So- you're telling me that a big company like ACD actually wants people to engage with them who yes. want to come work for you. you That's know, right. It's the weirdest thing, right? We oh. think of it as like throwing resumes, I think, out there a lot of times. And that's like, yeah, maybe the cold calling piece in some cases. But there's so much more, I think, that we can do as IAs to say, hey, how, how do I, how can I help you? So, see, now, like, like I was saying, with the industry influx and changing, there's photo estimating that's coming into play. More and more carriers utilize it. As an independent, if you have the ability to do photo estimating out of your own house, in between doing assignments, or you want to even add that as a service onto what you currently do now, simply reaching out to a company such as ACD and letting us know what you offer is a great way to get started. Now, think about this way. And like you were talking about, Chris, you're saying, hey, you know what? We <clears throat> actually want people to reach out. That's right. And instead of just sending it out saying, uh, you know, when people do this, they say, yeah, I'd like to be part of your network. You know, that's, a, that's an okay way. They, they want to get started. And then we have people contacting them and we have a conversation. But a great way to lead in would be to potentially send a short email stating a little bit about how, you know, my name is, you know, whatever, and that I am an independent appraiser. My business covers these following territories. I offer these services. I also can offer photo estimating. I would love to find out more about, you know, you know, becoming part of your network and potentially expanding my business. I you know, and, and, and promote yourself in a, in a positive way because I look at it this way. When we see that come in and we see somebody that writes, you know, and excited, like they're enthusiastic about their own business, we see that as, wow, this person cares about what they're doing. They're enthusiastic. They want to join our network. And we're, we're going to be excited about contacting them and getting them part of that, of the ACD network. And I think that goes with everything out there. I'm sure all the other competitors out there would love people like that to reach out to them as well. Because it all it does is help elevate everybody's quality, everybody's success. And it, it really helps rise everything for everybody. And the key is, 
I know just I, a lot of people are busy too. I know a lot of appraisers are in the field. They don't they say, you know what, marketing is one of the last things I can think about because I'm just trying to get these assignments done. I got to get these total loss forms done. I got all this work to do. But you know what? Set aside maybe 15 minutes to 30 minutes a week, even if it's just on a weekend real quick. You know, take that time to write a few notes, send them out, even on through LinkedIn. It can pay off huge because I think that a lot of people don't realize that just a few 15 minutes here or 30 minutes here doesn't have to be a lot of time and investment. It's just making that consistency happen. And I think if you, just like I'm sure you, Chris, you're running your business too. We all have to do this. You got to be organized where you set certain segments of time a lot, a lot, you know, aside to do the things that you need to do to get your business moving forward. And what people don't realize a lot of times is success and getting along in business to grow is it's not going to be necessarily one thing you do. It's a culmination of little things along the way you stack on together that ultimately lead to success. So if you're consistent, like, okay, every Monday I'm going to, or every Saturday I'm going to send out, you know, for, you know, a few emails to potential customers or people that I could, you know, be on their vendor list. You do that consistently. It, it'll pay off. It's the things that add up. So don't feel like, it's a major thing you have to bite off, a big thing to chomp off on. It's just consistency. Hey, just jumping in here real quick. If you like what you're seeing so far, be sure and hit the like button. And if you know somebody who you think might find value in this video, be sure to share it with them on social media. Okay, back to the video. And now for those who, Ernie has not read the book yet, that why we're doing this interview is for the Networking Justers Playbook and really diving in with industry experts who are way better networking than I could ever be, or even my co-author could be uh but when he reads the book he's going to think i stole from him but i swear <laughs> it's already written okay <laughs> but you i i just i love the confirmation so when the book comes out early you might go wow this is, is exactly what i said but i might take a few things and put it in there because i think one of the cool things you pointed out that i didn't think about was in that initial email we we call it the baited intro right where we're connecting to an ia firm and saying hey <laughs> we want to work with you when this is where we work would it be okay you know and driving that conversation the point is to start the conversation pique the interest not just send a resume right we want the point it, so this is a play that we say inside the book but i like what you said about list your services because i didn't think about that like listing your service like oh we don't have a full appraiser in dallas or wherever it is or we don't have a photos only guy someone who's willing to do photos only at a price that we want to work with. So maybe this is that guy because all of a sudden it's not just another appraiser. It's an appraiser who does heavy equipment, RVs, whatever the case is. Right. So I, I really, really like that. And I think the listener and the video viewer uh, needs to really hone in on that because there's power in what Ernie's saying to say, Hey, list your services. It's not hard. And then the consistency in the action, I think, um, you mentioned something earlier in the interview about, uh, you know, your reputation's everything, right? Reputation's everything. And I would say you're kind of saying that's how you build the reputation is these consistent actions. It's not the one article. It's the one article, the three follow-ups, the one reach out, the helping somebody else. The, it's all of that kind of culminates um, into your reputation. Is that, am I understanding what you're saying, right? Hey, you're I'm pulling it from all over. You're 100% right. And I, I think the thing you got to think about is what you're trying to do. You're trying to, like I said, create a positive buzz about your <clears throat> business and your company. And like I said earlier on the, you know, on the conversation is the biggest problem for any business out there is obscurity. You know, you in your mind, you can think that you're doing everything right. You know, you, even, even just by simply doing a great job, even as an appraiser out there, you can think you're doing everything right. But if you're not consistently top of mind with the you know, company you're working for, um, you're not going to be noticed. And being top of mind can be real simple. Let's say you're an appraiser and you're doing a great job. That, in, in many times, that will be enough to get you really far. That will be enough. But another way, just I'll give you some little things you can think about. Another way is go the extra mile. And when I say the extra mile is, let's say you're doing an assignment and you do a great job on it. You summarize it up. Photos are excellent. Estimate is great. Your summary is nice. But you see there's a problem in here. Something doesn't seem right that you know that the adjuster or somebody's going to have a question on, even though you did a great job on it, 
Maybe that's the call. Maybe that's the one you pick up the phone call and you call that, you call the appraisal company you're working for, you call that adjuster directly and you say, you know what, I got the assignment done, but there's a little hiccup on here that I noticed it could be a problem later on, but I want to give you the update on it so you knew over the phone. So you're just doing that little extra call and that little extra call will be, even though you did a great job, that adjuster might call back and say to us and say, you know what, that, this happens too. The, the appraiser on this file, they were so detailed. They even called me on the file and explained to me what their notes said so I could even handle it with the owner that much easier. And now you don't have to do it every time, but when you do that strategically here and there on files that you know could potentially be a problem that helps solve the problem, it shows reliability. It shows that you're a go-to person. So you got to, as an appraiser, you got to make that decision like, okay, this is one where I can actually give a little bit of effort and actually can help solve a problem that goes a long way to becoming top of mind. So you got to strategically put that into your business saying, yeah, this is a great call I could make that could help me, you know, bring attention to myself in a positive way, but also help the customer out. And little things like that, it's the little extra note letting you know, hey, I just want to let you know this problem, this problem file is all completed, it's all set. Those are the things that separate you from the competition, very key. It's, and part of that is perception, I think, um, as you get experience, especially, because when you're starting out, you're just so overwhelmed sometimes by the, the lay of the land and trying to understand it. But once you get the perception of how a file should flow, you start yeah. being able to identify what I call those ticking time bombs, where it's like, oh, yeah. oh, oh wait, that could blow up on me later. I did everything right, but I think that could backfire. So let me go ahead and become a guyver right now. And get <laughs> right. Exactly. Like, like, for example, when we started the company, I mean, I would go out, I would do appraisals myself. Um, you'd see a claim come through. And let's say I was, you know, the claim's 10 miles from my house here. And I got the claim could come in and it would say rush on it. So I know the adjuster needed it fast. I'd go out there, get it done quick, boom, send it back in. But then I would also call that adjuster, even if I didn't get him on the phone, leave a quick voicemail. Hey, I know this was a rush for you. I just want to let you know it's back in your file. You should see it any moment. If you don't have it, let me know. Here's my phone number. And you know what? That little extra mile, you know, huge way. Wow. They got it done the same day and they even left me a message. So, so those little things. That's awesome. Love it. Now, Ernie, I want to shift gears if you got time to one other little aspect of this. You know, we're talking to a lot of potential and younger and newer IAs who are looking at the industry. And I know you see the lay of the land, even I think bigger than what I could ever dream of, of where this industry is going. And I think a lot of people talk to me and say, yeah, it sounds great to become an IA, but it just seems like everything's going away. Like, Photo apps are taking over. There's no need for me. Should I put all this effort into networking and build a reputation in something that's disappearing? What would you say to a person who feels that way? Well, in any business, in today's society, you see so much in the news about how AI and robots and everything's going to eliminate jobs and there's going to be self-driving cars. We've heard about that years before. Then we find out that it's going to feel a little more complex before it happens. And I just went to the... Um, just went to the San Diego International Auto Show at the end of just end of 2018 here and saw these cars. And yeah, they have assisted driving in them, but I didn't see anything without a steering wheel in there. They all had steering wheels and there's still people driving. There's going to be more assisted technology that will help re you know, reduce some accidents. But the human aspect, people want to drive their cars. Most people want to. And I don't see auto claims going away anytime soon. Photo estimating is going to increase. I, I don't doubt that at all. A lot of carriers are moving in their own internal staff into doing photo estimating. But there's such a huge market in this business that there's always going to be a segment. There's going to have to be inspections done. And if you can diversify your business and also be able to write photo estimates when those situations happen, and you learn some of the heavy trucks, knowing how to write you know, tractor trailers and specialty, if you can diversify your skills, have the ability to be flexible, write photo estimates, maybe go in the field and be very diverse in what you're doing. There's, I believe, a very, very solid niche for where you're, you know, that career is. And the key though, is you gotta, you know, you gotta be able to become that best person out there in your area, build your business and become, like I said, the go-to person. Because even in, in, a, in a dynamically changing industry, if you focus on what you're good at and doing a great job, quality, getting your name out there. There's always going to be business for the people that can do that kind of job. And 
I don't see anything changing dramatically in the industry at this time. But the key though is in any industry, we never know what's going to happen. But if you can focus on being the best that you can be in your sector, that's going to be the biggest way to secure and grow your company and your business. Because there comes a pivot point in every industry. I mean, it even has happened with the photo estimate. We've all had to kind of pivot some. So when the next pivot comes, if you have a good reputation, people mm -hmm. are going to be more likely to take a chance with you in a pivot that they've worked with before than somebody they don't know. So what would you tell, let, let's take it a step further. I'm really pushing here, Annie, because I'm after something. And, yeah. and, and, I, and, I, and I feel like you're someone who could really shed some light on it, even for me. If there's a young IA, let's say, let's pick somewhere that everybody's from, Dallas. I mean, mm -hmm. my gosh, how many adjusters and IAs are in Dallas? So if, if, you're an, if you were an IA in Dallas, you're like, no, I want to do this. I think I can build a reputation. I think this is an industry I want to be in. Do you mm -hmm. feel like there's room for another IA in Dallas? Yeah, there's always going to be a room, room for people who do a great job. There are literally thousands and thousands and thousands of claims out there. There's a lot of work to be done. There's a lot of business out there. Finding people that are reliable, that will communicate, because if you want to talk about that, but communicate is so, <laughs> communication is so important. People, if you want to get out there and, and grow your business and build that reputation, if you're willing to invest the time and do it and become that go-to person, there's always the opportunity. People are in this industry, especially if you're younger too, there's, there is a, there's a need for people who have that expertise. And also, if you're young out there, spend the time investing in growing your skills. I can't emphasize that enough. If you can learn heavy equipment, tractor estimate, all these things, the more you build your skills, the more valuable you become. Very important. And that's just like anything in life. You've got to always keep learning, always keep growing. I look at it like this, at the start of the year, I don't do New Year's resolutions, but I always make it a point that, you know what, what do I want to learn and do this year? What am I going to grow my skills in? What am I going to become better at? Because you always, as a person, have to be growing. Because if you're stagnant, you're not going to ever, you're not going to be moving ahead. I mean, this is common sense. So always be looking to grow your skills. You can do that. You do that. You become that reputation. There's always room for you in the industry. Beautiful. Before I let you go, I'm going to give you the opportunity here and you can decline if you want. And I can always edit out. But so what are some new year resolutions for Ernie Bray and for ACD? What's happening in your world in 2019 that you're lowering your head and putting your shoulder into and saying, let's do this. For the company, we're just focused on continually growing the business. We want to continue to become a go-to provider for insurance carriers throughout the country um, we're always looking to bring new technology. There's things we're working on all the time and really just continue to keep refining and, and streamlining the workflow and, and doing what we're best at is, is continue to give great service to our clients. I mean, really just heads down and continue to grow. For me personally in 2019, um, my major goal is to focus on health and, uh, health, mental well-being, all the whole, basically mind, body and spirit, because, if you as an individual don't take care of your health, you don't get proper sleep, you don't eat right, you don't take care of and get some basic exercise, you're never gonna be operating at your optimal levels. And I have always been an athlete my whole life, so I've always been really focused on this and that's, and that's great. But this year, I wanna make sure I'm getting better sleep. I wanna make sure I'm doing all the things to operate the best I can be because if you're not operating at your levels, you're not doing a service to those around you, you're not doing a service to yourself, and it's just really become just focusing on the health. Because in any business, if you're running the company, it can be stressful, but you have to be able to put it in perspective. And when you're starting the company, if you're an independent out there and you're on the road and you're driving, doing these things, it can be tempting. I gotta, I gotta go eat something real quick. You know, pretty soon you find yourself going down a path where you're not sleeping at night, and you're stressed out not good for you. You've got to find a way to have balance. And so that's my advice for a lot of people out there. And even myself, just focus on the important things in life, your family, um, all these different things like that, that really have more, you got to remember business is important, but you also got to be very balanced in your life. And that's kind of what I'm working on in 2019. Love it. Love it. Love it. And I love Ernie that, uh, you and ACD have sponsored the podcast for so long. So for those who are listening, watching, 
Uh, this is the CEO of the company that sponsors the Independent Adjuster Podcast. Appreciate it so much. You're the reason I'm able to do a lot of fun projects. I always tell everybody, well, I wouldn't be writing books if I didn't have a podcast sponsor. I wouldn't be doing these things if ACD wasn't supporting what we're doing because it just frees up some of that time to go, we need to do well, the things the industry needs, not well, just. I got to say, Chris, I say you've done a great job out there. You're a very, very energetic, positive thing you're doing out there for everybody. Awesome job on what you're doing because you're, bring, you're, built, you're bringing a lot of positivity to the industry. Very important, you know, enthusiasm, all that. It's, it's doing a great thing for a lot of people out there, giving them the idea, you know, giving them some inspiration too. Very, very important. Thank you very much, sir. And I look forward to seeing what you and ACD do in 2019. And maybe next year we'll be talking about uh, uh, all the positive impacts and you can maybe give a mental health speech. Uh, <laughs> and be helping all of us uh, IAs who are stressed out, like, oh, what worked, what didn't. But really appreciate you. Really pre and I'll say one last thing. If you're an IA out there and you're looking to get in, you know, grow your business, feel free to reach out to our company. Feel free to reach out. We're more than happy to talk with you about the opportunities out there and uh, help you grow your company, your business. Just email network at acd.com. acdcorp.com. ICDcorp. There we go. See, that's why we use a recording is because I'll <laughs> screw it up. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. And I will uh, talk with you very soon. You got it. Thanks. Question of the day. What are you doing right now today to add one more person to your network? For much more information about crushing it as an independent adjuster, head on over to adjustertv.com. And if you got value from this video, you can help me create more videos just like this by subscribing to Adjuster TV on YouTube. Wondering what to watch next? There are tons more videos right here on the Adjuster TV YouTube channel. And as always, thank you so much for watching and have a great storm. This is a TV.